Hey guys, welcome to today's webinar. My name's Peter Taylor and it's my pleasure to be in the driving seat today to take us through this session. Our topic is capture automation, where to start. The idea really behind this subject is for people that have never done capture automation before. It might be that you currently have manual scanning and capture processes. It might be that you have old technology that's out of support and needs refreshing, or that you believe your current capture processes are inefficient. If any of these scenarios apply to you, Hopefully you'll find this session really helpful. Okay, let's get started. Like many technologies, capture automation can be a bit of a minefield. Once you start researching, you very quickly get hit with a whole range of industry buzzwords, terms, technologies, approaches. It's quite often hard to review all of these and understand which ones are relevant and which ones aren't. Understandably, when you get hit with all this information, it raises a lot of questions, and somewhere hidden amongst those questions is your cry for help. Over the next few minutes, we're going to cover the top five capture automation considerations to help you get started. The first topic is do I need a full digital mailroom solution? For those of you who are unfamiliar with the term digital mailroom, this is effectively replacing your post room with a scanning and digital delivery solution. Imagine it that all of your inbound mail, your paper documents are scanned and digitized in the post room and sent to business areas via image rather than by paper. Obviously, there's many efficiencies that can be gained through this implementation, but it can also be quite complex. This is really touching all of the back office functions of your business. Whilst there's great gains to be had, there's also some complexity to this sort of project. But what if your capture need is simpler? What if you just have a departmental requirement or even a specific application or document that you would like to automate? Nowadays, with more flexible software and potentially reduced implementation costs, these scenarios have become a lot more viable as standalone implementations. So it's perfectly feasible if you select the right technology that you can implement a focused solution for a very specific need. Key to this is the flexibility of the software that you choose. You're looking for scalable modular technologies. You can find many commercial approaches that avoid traditional click charges and offer alternatives such as perpetual and service based options that can scale well from lower volumes. I mentioned modular technologies and these are great because you can focus on your functional requirements and only buy those specific technologies that you need. The next area to focus on is the documents themselves. They're critical to the success of a capture automation project. Let's look at a few key areas. It's important to start by understanding the volumes and specifically the peak daily throughput needs. Also look to identify any poor quality documents that you need to deal with, such as photocopies. You need to know the types of documents and the data that you need to capture. And lastly, you need to identify the specific processing rules needed. Let's take a look at a simple matrix that you might find useful. The first category in our matrix is barcodes. Documents with identification and data barcodes are great for capture automation and form the first group. The next category is structured forms. These are documents that are under design control. The layout is fixed and they are also version controlled. Examples would be checks, application forms and other general business forms. Next is unstructured documents. These are documents where you don't control the design and layout. So these would include documents coming from third parties. Invoices are a typical example, but it would also include general correspondence. You can't control how a customer might structure a letter they write to you, but you still need to process the document. Often, born digital documents such as PDFs and Microsoft Word documents are treated as unstructured from a capture perspective. The final category is more of a data category, and this is cursive handwriting. So bear in mind that this might be a subcategory to the others. For example, you might have a subcategory of your general correspondence work, your unstructured documents that will be cursive. Once you've identified your documents into these categories, 
you will be well placed to understand the technologies that are needed for automation. The barcode technology is long established. It's generally simple to deploy and you can look for products such as IBM or Capture Suite where you can purchase just the specific modules that you need. Structured Forms again is well established technology. A great feature of Structured Forms is its ability to handle a very broad range of data types so it can cope with machine print, hand print, checkboxes and even look for signatures all within one technology. Moving on to Unstructured, these technologies tend to be very good for machine print capture, but can be more challenging for other data types. It's why I mentioned earlier that the understanding of both the document types and the data is important. Equally with the cursive handwriting, these need quite specific technology approaches and newer technologies that often require a different approach and training to get them up and running. So once you've completed your document analysis, you know your volumes, quantities and processing rules and have your matrix, you can quickly start to get a feel for how complex your projects might be. Integration of any technology can be complicated. So in this next section, we're going to focus on a few approaches that could potentially simplify this. Or another way to think about it is simple ways to get started. Let's begin by looking at the input side, or getting images into the capture system. One very simple technique for this is to use a shared folder. With this technique, whenever you place batches of images into this location, the system can automatically pull them in. An advantage of this approach is you can use existing scanning technology and setups. As long as you can access the images and route them to the shared folder, you can get started. The next technology is to use email. Similar to the shared folder, capture systems such as IBM or Capture Suite can also pull email inboxes and again automatically pull the contents in for processing. So two very quick to deploy options for the input side. But what about the output side? Once the system has captured the data, how are you going to get it out? Well, again, quite a simple technique is to just put the data into the file name. Another technique might be to create a simple data file Something like a CSV, spreadsheet, or XML is quite common nowadays. Data files tend to need slightly more integration work because the file might need to be uploaded to a line of business system. And that's where some customers look to use robotic process automation to automate this upload process. You can look to tighten your integrations via a phased approach, but really these quick, simple ways to get started are great for proof of concepts and quick deployments. Let's take a look at the email process by way of a quick demonstration. I'm going to use IBM or Capture Suite pre-configured to poll an email address. Here's the email we're going to send. It's got some generic documents with generic file names, and these are proof of deliveries. There's a range of different fields off of each one of these documents that we're going to let the system try to automatically capture. So we get things like address information, proof of delivery numbers, dates, um, and specific customer numbers, all data that we want to capture automatically via the recognition technology. This is a specific email address that we've configured the system to poll. So if we look at the setup tool, you can see that there's a mapping to that specific email inbox. That means that the system will automatically pull in emails once they arrive in that inbox. So let's get started with this process. And the first thing we're going to do is send the email uh, through the standard email system. So there you can see the email being sent. Um, and if we look at that specific mailbox that we're polling, we can see our email has arrived uh, um, with its attachments waiting to be processed. IBM Mail Capture Suite is set to poll this, this account. So at regular intervals, it's going to look for work. And once it finds it, it's gonna automatically pull it into its workflow. There you can see it's gone from the uh, email inbox. And if we look in the Capture Suite dashboard, we can see that a new batch has been created and is in process. It's currently going through the automated processes. So the recognition engines are capturing the data, extracting whichever fields that have been configured. It's then gonna go on through some validation processes to make sure the data is correct and meets all rules. 
if it meets all of that rules, it goes straight through to output, as you can see here. In the target outlet location, it's created a file. Um, within there, you can now see the PDFs that have been generated. I've got a whole raft of data that's automatically been captured by IBML Capture Suite's recognition technology. So without us having to key anything, all of that data has been captured and put into the, the file names. We have focused on automated data capture so far, but what else can these technologies do for us? There are three main areas where these technologies can also help. These are classification, automatically working out what document types are, prioritization and the escalation of urgent work, and alerts. Alerts are where we can look for specific validation rules that need to be applied and spot them early in the process. Let's take a look at an alert example within IBM L Capture Suite. Here we're going to use IBM L Capture Suite scan client with an alert configured. It's going to be identifying different structured form types and looking for ones that haven't been signed. As it builds up the grid, you can see the different types being identified and straight away it's showing the not signed documents. If we compare this to the image on the right hand side, you can see that the signature is missing. This is important to spot right at the time of scan when the paper is available, as it can be more time consuming and costly to have to go and find the paper later on in the process if this is a critical processing rule. For the final discussion today, I thought I'd talk a little bit about capture automation rates, which is often a key topic when people are considering capture automation technologies. Automation rates are important. Obviously, higher automation rates do provide benefits, but it's important to remember that it shouldn't be the only thing you focus on. The best way to think of recognition technology is as a productivity tool. It's not necessarily going to completely automate an end-to-end -end work stream for you, but it should reduce manual processes, costs and time. Let's take a look at a quick example. Here is IBM L Capture Suite's manual validation client. We can see in this example, the .NETX recognition technology has captured some but not all the fields we wanted to capture. It's managed to capture the first three fields, the customer number, the ID, which was captured via a database lookup, and the proof of delivery number, but it hasn't captured the special ID. So let me key that field now. You can see it's taken me about seven seconds to capture all of these fields. The technology did most of the heavy lifting. It wasn't 100% recognition, so I keyed the exceptions, the ID field. Let's compare that to an example where I haven't used any recognition technology. Here we have the same document and the same process, but this time I have to key all of the fields myself. I've got to start with the customer number, then you will see the automatic database lookup still. Then I have to go on and key the proof of delivery number. And then finally, I key the special ID again. Let me just finish that and we'll see how the times compare. You can see as I stop the clock, we can make a very rough comparison. If we compare back to using the capture automation technology, we took about seven seconds to capture all of the data versus 21 seconds to capture it manually. So roughly a three times productivity improvement using capture automation. Even though it didn't manage to capture all of the data for us, we still got an overall productivity benefit. Well, we've made it through the five capture automation considerations. This is part of a series of capture focused webinars. If you'd like to view any of the others or discuss your capture project needs, head over to ibml.com, go to the consult an expert section, and you can request whatever information you are interested in. I hope you found this information interesting today, and we look forward to seeing you on the next session. Thank you very much for your time.